Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our backyard. This morning, I wanted to do a video on hummingbird feeder placement, and we are in the throes of hummingbird migration season. And so I wanted to get out here real early because they're pretty active. I know you can't hear them on camera, but they're chirping around and there's lots of hummingbirds that are just flying all over the place. And we've got, um, as you can, there we go. We've got some coming in that are <laughs> escorting each other out. So I thought I would, I thought I would um, just do a video this morning on feeder placement. So let me zoom in on a little one here sitting on the porter weed. got a lot of activity going on and in particular the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because if you want to attract hummingbirds to your yard and your feeders it's recommended if you have multiple feeders to put them all together and well not all together but have them to where they are close to each other and you'll see I have a group of feeders on this bird feeding pole system and then I have one on a shepherd's hook over here <laughs> and you can see the hummingbirds here are coming in and feeding and defending their feeders and talking and just really having a lot of activity and I, I get easily distracted when I see them because they're so fun. Sorry about that. But the reason you want to have them together is it does have the appearance of abundance. And when hummingbirds are migrating as they are and they're flying through because they migrate during the day, they're looking to see where they can come down and eat. And you want your yard to be inviting. And so one of the things that my neighbor and I have, and you know, they're in my neighbor's yard also, is she has lights that she has strung up. And hummingbirds like to be in trees and bushes. They want to feel safe. And so you'll notice there's a lot of trees and hiding places for them to take cover. And they are, um, they do, they take cover and they then come down and feed. And so you know that in my previous videos, I've talked about how I've brought in hummingbird plants specifically for them to feed on. And they absolutely do. But during migration season, they are also out looking for the feeders. And so it's really important that you have this inviting yard of abundance. And so if you have a couple of feeders, put them together. And you'll know that the conventional wisdom is not to have hummingbird feeders together just during normal times because you have them fend, you know, defending their territories. And so one hummingbird will try to you know, defend and just have lay claim to those two feeders. But now during migration, there are so many birds and there's so much activity right now that you want to make sure that you have this, um, this yard of abundance. And so then it's recommended to bring them together. The other thing you'll notice is hummingbird feeders are red 
and hummingbirds are highly attracted to the color red. And so if you don't have red in your garden, you can even tie um, a red bow if you want on a shepherd's hook, just to get them to where they're coming down and into your yard. <laughs> I wish I'm here, so I'm in their way, but they're squeaking and just all over the place. It's so fun to see all these hummingbirds during the migration season. But in any case, um, they're highly, highly attracted to the color red, but please don't put red food dye into the hummingbird nectar because that is not good for them. And just like red dye isn't great for us, it's not good for them. So please don't do that. And the other thing I'm going to link up top a video that I did on the best hummingbird feeder in my yard. And it happens to be this saucer type feeder. And the reason it's so handy, and I only use these feeders now, is because it's so easy to change out the nectar in clean. All the other types I have tried, yes, I love them. Some I even bought for aesthetics and beauty, but especially now during hummingbird migration season, I wanna make sure that I have um, the easiest type to clean. And so these are the ones that I have out. I'm also gonna link a video up top on the hummingbird um, feeder, if you will. It's a, it's a kind of like a cover or a umbrella and it's hard plastic. I'm gonna link that up top too because that's really nice to um, have and cover for the shades so it doesn't heat up um, the, hummingbird, the hummingbird nectar so much. Okay, now I'm gonna kinda go into the shade area of my garden. So again, you see there are bushes and trees for them to perch and then come down and feed and go back and perch and then come over into the flowers and back and perch. And it's just a, a, a feeling of safety. But you'll also notice I have my hummingbird feeder set up in the shade, um, if you will, in a line and it's so they're easily accessible and easily seen again that sense of feeding abundance <laughs> they are so talking i'm cramping their style i guess kind of being here unfortunately when i move away then you know then there's lots of activity down on this end so i have pretty much a area that's sunny down here and um, they're all in the flowers and in the feeders and then I have an area set up in the shade and they're all along here too and they even feed on the coleus blooms and I have feeders here so all in all I have nine feeders set out right now during hummingbird season and then of course all the blooms and flowers. I have mentioned this in past videos that one of the flowers they absolutely love is this vine which is called cardinal climber. And the cardinal climber its bloom is a trumpet shaped bloom with this long tubular flower that the hummingbirds just love and I plant this every year and it flowers real nicely during hummingbird season and it's flowering okay I'm gonna come around to the back I've mentioned the issues that I've had with this vine um, this summer because of the extreme heat, the excessive heat we've had in Texas. Um, we've had so many days over 100 with the high humidity. It just really stunted the growth. Pretty much what I have observed, it stunted a lot of the 
leaf production, but it is flowering. The hummingbirds do love it. I don't think I'm going to get the four to 500 blooms a day on it, unfortunately, but it, it is producing. So I'm very, very happy about that. A bush that the hummingbirds absolutely love is firebush and they're back here a lot. <laughs> And as you can see, the fire bush is very prolifically blooming. <laughs> Hummingbirds also just love porterweed. And my blue porterweed is still flowering nicely. I'm going to link up top a video that I did recently about a super bloom that I had with my porterweed recently so you can see how wonderfully um, they can bloom out. And they also like to um, rest on the bloom stalks. I do have porterweed next to my feeders. It's my red porterweed. This one is the purple porterweed. This one only has a few blooms here and there uh, on the outside. You can't see them well up here. Well, hello. <laughs> and one right off to my right side here. trying not to talk <laughs> as I'm zooming in but there I think I've got kind of a little bit of a detente here <laughs> whoops and one almost hit my head well good morning I'm gonna come over to the corner so this tree in my neighbor's yard is a spot that they like to um, that they like to perch in, and then come down into my yard and feed. And I have um, hummingbird feeder set up over here, amongst all my blooms <laughs> and they are going to it. Unfortunately, when I am in an area, they move over and congregate to another area. <laughs> Let's see. some feeding right here on the Mexican bush sage or Selvia leucantha. But hummingbirds feed on nectar. They feed on bugs.
So when I zoom in, I try to be quiet because the audio is not as good. But hummingbirds come down and they feed on the flowers. They prefer the flowers. Got a hummingbird over there. They are funny. So I've only caught of just a few, one, two here and there, but they're all over and they're flying and they're catching bugs and they're escorting each other out. And they're just, it's just a lot of activity, which is fun. And then the other thing they like to do is they like to also perch in our trees. And so we've got a couple of trees um, in our shade area that produce a lot of wonderful shade. And they um, will perch up there and then come down and feed. I can't really tell if you can hear the hummingbirds as they chirp at each other. I wish the I wish the um, camera could pick that up because they're <laughs> they're pretty loud at the moment, and there's a lot going on, a lot of activity. So sorry that I've stayed so long on them here and their antics, but not only do they feed on the feeders, but they come down and they feed on the bugs, and when you've got plants, native plants, other plants, plants that they love. They love salvia, um, you know, they love the tubular flowers. They're all in the flowers that I have in the yard. Even been over at the yellow cestrum and the fire bush. They're just love the flowers, love the nectar, love the bugs, and then the water. So I'm gonna move again. I do have a bird bath specifically for them, and it is shallow, so they can sit on top of here and, and wash, and there's just not, um, you know, they're small birds, so they can't use regular bird baths. And the other thing is on the top here, there's an ant moat, and that's so the fire ants don't come in and get at the nectar. And so um, I have seen hummingbirds um, uh, use that water too. So keeps ants away and if hummingbirds need to drink the water, I've seen that too. So having shelter, food and water is a big draw to have hummingbirds into your yard. If you can, incorporate the color red. And if you don't have a lot of red, tie, tie some red bows and get them to come down into your yard. Have a couple of feeders visible. <laughs> Got a couple fighting here over the cardinal climber. And all feeders don't necessarily have to be visible from above as long as you can get them into your yard. And once in your yard, it's amazing. They do find the feeders, even in the shade, um, very, very easily. Well, it has been a wonderful morning. 
I know you probably can't see it, but over in my neighbor's yard, um, my neighbor and I both um, have hummingbird friendly plants and she also hangs feeders and so they have multiple yards that they go to right here. So it's not just my yard, it is two yards here and that also helps bring um, a nice draw to our area. <laughs> I hate to keep zooming in and out because they move so quickly, um, but there's, oh, probably 20 birds in the yard at the moment in all the various areas. Well, thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope to see you again soon. I'm going to finish by zooming in and not talking, but zooming in on a hummingbird. <laughs>